this is the most fascinating subject on display technologies for gaming. It is called the Blur Busters Law. And it's going to explain you what is motion blur, how many frames per second we need for gaming, and why people think that, oh, 30 frames per second just sucks. It looks awful for gaming. So these new games coming on the consoles, 4K, 30 frames, it's just garbage, man. It's just unplayable. So this is going to explain you also the difference between a sample and whole display like this OLED and a CRT and why the CRT is so amazing, why I, I'm always pra praising the CRT for its motion clarity. And I'm also going to explain you in detail what is black frame insertion doing in this LG OLED with some examples here. So I'm going to have the link in the description for this article. It's amazing. It's called the Blur Busters Law. And this is how, understanding this is how I predicted NVIDIA DLSS motion interpolation. And I'm actually going to predict the future on this video because I know what is coming. And this is what is coming. What is coming is perfect motion clarity. <laughs> so let me start by explaining you some basic concepts. So we talk about stuttering in low frame rate uh, content. A stuttering looks like this. So imagine you have this uh, image here moving on the screen and it looks like this. So instead of looking like perfect like this, it looks like this. It looks shaky. So it is shaking too much. It's doing this. That's a stuttering. So when the stuttering is at higher frame rates, then we call that blur, motion blur. So it looks blurry. It looks like this. Look at this. This, this is awful. This is how 60 frames per second looks on sample and hold displays. So people are wanting 60 frames per second and 60 frames per second looks like this. This is awful, man. This is absolutely horrendous. So my plasma TV at 60 looks like this, okay? <laughs> a lot better. So with black frame insertion on the OLED, we can get an image clarity that looks like this, okay? Which is a lot better. That's why I love black frame insertion. So what black frame insertion is doing is simple. So, well, it's not that simple, but I'm going to try to break it down for you so you understand it. So imagine that we have a stuttering. So I'm going to use the stuttering... Uh, you know, example, to, so you get more clarity, okay? But black frame insertion here doesn't work at 24 frames or 30. It works at 60, 100, and 120 hertz on this LG C1. But let's talk about stuttering. So we see a, you know, a much bigger difference. So imagine you see an image on the screen that is doing this, okay? It's doing this. The reason is sample and hold displays are showing the image all the time. So the, the image is stays on the screen all the time. So black frame insertion, what it's going to do for you is that you can imagine, you see the image doing this, okay, doing this. So that causes a stutter or a blur if it's a higher frame rate. So the black frame insertion, imagine that the image does this and when it goes back, we're going to, you, we're going to have a black frame. So instead of you see this, you're going to see only this. <laughs> so you're gonna see instead of the stutter you're gonna see this <laughs> it's difficult to explain but this is what black frame insertion is doing so let's say no black frame insertion the image looks like this okay black frame insertion you're gonna see this <laughs> okay so when I do this it's a black screen okay it's black so we do this the image instead of looking like this it's going to do this so that's why it looks more clear in, mo in motion. So black frame insertion, what it's doing is this on this LG OLED. It is reducing the size of the, the window size that you can see. And I'm going to explain you why that is giving you a better motion clarity by using this Blur Busters uh, law. So what the Blur Busters law is, let me read it to you so you understand it is very, very, very short and easy to understand. Let me find it first. Okay, here it is. Motion blur is directly proportional to pixel visibility time. Okay, pixel visibility time. So 
on a sample and hold display, what is the pixel visibility time? Is the frequency of the display. Because the display is showing you the image and it's staying on the screen until the new one comes. So if the display is 60 hertz, that's the motion clarity you're going to get, 60 hertz, because the pixel visibility time is going to be 60. So what 60 hertz means is you get 60 images in one second, okay? 60 images in one second. That's going to be the pixel visibility time. The display has the image and the new one is draw and stays on the screen until the new one comes. That's why you get this, this blur. That's why you get this blur. So uh, then let me keep, uh, keep reading. So non-strobe, so means sample and hold displays, pixel visibility time is proportional to frame rate up to the hertz, sample and hold effect. That's what I was explaining. And on a strobe, like a CRT, pixel visibility time is proportional to impulse length of pixel, okay? Whether BFI, strobing, phosphor, etc. So this is what matters on a uh, on a CRT, or this is what this is what black frame insertion is doing on this LG OLED. The CRT is actually <laughs> just the line. So on the LG OLED with black frame insertion, or any OLED that do, does does black frame insertion, what is going to give you a better motion clarity is the size of the window. So when we use, for example, Motion Pro Low, the window size is going to be a lot bigger. It's going to occupy most of the screen. And then it's going to do this. The, the screen is being refreshed like this. Okay? It's going top. You see here, it's going top to bottom. And it has a window size. So we use, let's say, black from insertion medium. Then that window size is smaller. And the rest is black. It's perfect black. So it's going to do this. And then black from insertion high is the window size is going to be smaller and you, the rest of the screen is going to be black. Okay. That's why it flickers because most of the screen is black. And also it flickers because we are comparing. So we are comparing a square wave uh, a strobing versus a curve wave a strobing. So the CRT, because it's analog, it is not digital and it has a phosphorus uh, decay, there's a phosphorus uh, property that the screen is made of. It causes that the curve is smooth instead of being square, digital curve. That's why you see more flickering because there's no fade out. So the, the image is not fading. It's just perfect, boom, perfect, boom. That's why we see flicker. So the way to avoid flickering is either by increasing the window size, so you get less motion clarity, or by so by reducing the window size, but increasing the, fre the refresh rate proportionally, accordingly. So for example, on this LG C1, the black frame insertion at 100 hertz doesn't flicker, 120 hertz, oh, it does flicker, but I cannot see it. So at 100 and 120 hertz, I cannot see it. I can see it at 60, especially when most of the screen is white. When it's dark, I, I don't see it and it doesn't bother me. It looks a lot better. So yeah, that's what it is. As simple as that. So how can we get good motion clarity on a sample and whole display? How many frames per second do we need? Here is how much we need. We need 240 frames per second for the image to look like this on a sample and whole display. Okay. So if we have, <laughs> if we have a sample and hold, like a gaming monitor, that's 240 frames is going to look like this. Okay. Because it is directly proportional to the, to the frequency. So the motion clarity is directly proportional to the frequency of the display. But to push 240 frames per second is very difficult. That's why Nvidia is doing DLSS 3.0. It is doubling the frame rate. So what Nvidia is doing, is basically overcoming the sample and whole blurriness. The only reason why you want more frames per second, if you don't get a, a, an improvement on the responsiveness, is to get a better motion clarity. And the future is instead of doubling the frame rate, Nvidia can actually quadruple the frame rate, even 10x. That's the future, in my opinion. The future is a 1000 nits display 
to get perfect motion clarity on a sample and hold display, you need 1000 frames per second, okay? <laughs> 1000 hertz. So if you want the image to look like this, to look perfect, you need 1000 frames per second. And the only way we're going to get there is by using motion interpolation, okay? It's not going to happen that PCs trying to push real 1000 1, frames. It's just not gonna happen because the fidelity of the games is going up and up and up. So what, what's gonna happen, in my opinion, is we get like 100 frames, so the input lag is good enough, and then using AI, NVIDIA or AMD or Intel that is coming to the party, they are going to create fake frames, interpolated frames, that are going to give you perfect motion clarity. So we're going to have an HDR 10,000 nits capable display that's 1000 hertz, and you're going to get 100 frames per second on your game, turn on that motion, uh, you know, that motion interpolation and get a thousand frames. So you get perfect motion clarity with HDR. Because the problem with black frame insertion is that you lose brightness. And the reason you lose brightness is because most of the screen is black. Okay, So you have this, only this section of the screen drawing and the rest is black. So you lose uh, the peak brightness, you cut that peak brightness in half. So, what we can get right now, we don't have a 1000 hertz display, we have some 240 or 500 hertz display, but what we can get right now with this LG C1 is this, exactly. So this is sample and hold displays, this is uh, impulse. So what we can get right now with this LG C1 with black from insertion is this result. Between 4 milliseconds and 2 milliseconds of persistence, okay? Black frame insertion at 120 frames is going to be between these two images, between this one and this one. I would say, based on my experience, it's closer to this image than this one, but I might be wrong. I don't know exactly uh, what it is. It is for sure better than 240 hertz. So this 4 milliseconds of persistence is 240 hertz um, sample and hold. In my opinion, it is better. Actually, I heard from Alex from Digital Foundry. He has he just got an LG C1 and he compared Black Frame Insertion on 120 with his 300 hertz laptop screen. And he said Black Frame Insertion on 120 was looking better in motion than my 300 hertz laptop screen. And I guess that's the case because I see the difference between 60 and 120. So yeah, it's going to be between these two. So if we if we can get right now 120 use black from insertion, you get an amazing motion clarity. And in my opinion, until we have higher refresh rate displays and monitors with the motion interpolation from the GPU using AI, the best option we have is black from insertion because black from insertion is doubling more than doubling the motion clarity right now without even using the GPU and we can do both <laughs> we can do both we can use for example we can get 60 frames per second on our game with a very high fidelity double that frame rate using that motion interpolation from Nvidia DLSS 3.0 and on top of that use black frame insertion so from 60 you are going beyond 240 uh, frames per second motion clarity so from 60 is going to look between this image and this image right now. The problem is they need to fix the V-Sync needs to be on to use black from insertion and the input lag when you do that on DLSS 3.0 right now is atrocious. It's over 100 milliseconds. So they need to improve that. But that, that, that will come. That will come very soon. So yeah, I'm going to suggest you to read this article, uh, understand this law, this is just fascinating and it's going to help you understand the future and what is what is coming. So let me know if you have any questions. I think I hit all the, the targets, everything I wanted to talk about. Uh, so yeah, this is just amazing, fascinating. Read the article and let me know if you have any questions.